You've been hanging on with me all week. We've done all the checks and you're like, Becca, my baby is still just napping for 20 minutes. What gives? I'm here to tell you why short naps are a thing. Day in, day out, I get email supports, I get phone call supports, wondering about short naps. They're doing our program and short naps are happening. This happens all the time and I go through a few small changes and boom, we're napping so great. Now you've hung with me all week. You know the napping environment. You know the wake windows. You know a lot about naps. But why are we still having short naps? Well, let's go through my brain checklist that I walk through with clients. I'm gonna give you the top three things I check through. And if this is like, oh my gosh, I love this, I've got more for you, okay? Now, the first check is the environment, yes. Second check is the awake time. So let's just all like look at each other and be like, have you been doing that? Okay, you've been doing it, great. All right, the next thing I want you to check on for your baby's short naps are the feed schedules. Now, you're not gonna find me talking a lot about feeding schedules around here, but I wanna camp out on this for a moment. Now, feeding, bottles, nursing, solids, there are amazing professionals out there who provide a lot of great resources for you, and I am never gonna pretend that I know it all. I don't. So if you need resources on lactation, on baby-led feeding, there are a lot of places that you can go and you can look, and I've even linked some of them below, some of my favorite and most trusted resources. But when we're blanket statement saying feeding, a lot of the time a baby's short naps, and I'm speaking four months and up, because newborns, it's okay to have short naps, that's different. Four months and up, I'm going to be asking you, did your little one have a feed before they went down for a nap? If it was time for a feed, Specifically, if you have a baby who is on a two nap schedule, remember on that two nap schedule, there's a three hour gap between nap one and nap two. So you need to fill the void with food. You may be doing a bottle, solids, and then another bottle. That's okay. Your baby needs to have a feed before they go down for a nap. It's perfectly fine. This video has everything to do with like ripping out the idea of eat, play, sleep. Eat, play, sleep, I mentioned it earlier in the week. I love it, it's great, it's not a bad thing, but it's not gonna happen all of the time. And it does go away starting at like four months old. So don't hold yourself to this idea and this concept that they can't have a feed, they're about to go to sleep. They actually need to have a feed to have better naps. I see it happen all the time. Maybe it's just a top off feed. Maybe it's a full feed. They need that nursing formula to have a successful nap. It is really, truly important. And I want you to start tracking not only their naps, but their feeds as well. Now, the bonus tip of this is that when they are having that feed, are they awake? Are their eyes open? Are they engaged? Are they seeing food for nourishment that it is? Because here's the deal, you guys. That's the problem. If your little one sees food as a mechanism to go to sleep, to get tired, you will never have a long, successful nap. Because the fourth thing that I'm going to check in on is, what is your baby expecting? We know the environment's good. We know the awake windows are good. You fed them before a nap. Now what are they looking for? What do they think is gonna happen? Does your 10 month old think that after a 30 minute nap, that's one sleep cycle, 30 minutes, what do they think is gonna happen? Are they expecting you to pat them back to sleep because that's how they went to sleep in the first place? I get really fired up about this, but you cannot expect your baby to sleep longer than 30 minutes if you helped them go to sleep. It's just not gonna happen. They're expecting you to come back and help them go to sleep. That's the problem. So I want you to know it doesn't have to be that way. You can make independent sleep a thing. 
It starts at four months old inside of our baby sleepy coaching programs. You can check that out below. But there are all of these great pillars that make a great nap. Now, I want to also address the fact that sometimes it's okay to have a short nap. There is a podcast coming up, and when it's live and published, we will add that link here, where I've talked about, I've sprinkled this in Insta stories and things that I have manipulated our kids' naps before. When Hattie, my youngest, when she was on a two-nap schedule, I actually cut off her first nap at 45 minutes so I could get her up and we could go to the gym and I could have a life. We could get home for my oldest to have her one nap. And then I had an overlap of the second nap. You can do stuff like that. One of the biggest myths I hear about short naps is that people tell me, oh, my baby woke up crying after a nap. It must mean that they are not rested enough. They need more sleep. Not necessarily. I think that there's a lot to be said for personality here. If your child is just maybe in general a cranky kid, which I've met a lot of those before, sleep training doesn't magically change your child to be like this happiest kid in the world. I have worked with babies who are just cranky and they take a 45 minute nap and they wake up and they're grouchy and cranky and then they snap out of it and they're like ready to go for the rest of the day. If you have been chronically struggling with short naps, I hope you have gone through every single day because it's actually all built up to this All of these aspects that I've talked about work together to make sure that you can have nap success and you're not stuck with like 20 minute nap, 30 minute nap. But if you have been chronically struggling with 30 minute naps, 45 minute naps, never over an hour, then I invite you to step into the sleep society. We actually have an entire one hour course on short naps and I go deep and wide into case studies with our families who are inside the society. It is a great thing to check out. In fact, you can try it for a dollar. There is $1 for one week offer in the notes below. Check that out. It is an awesome resource. But the other thing I wanna say about short naps is that it is the most common issue. So I want you to know that, yeah, it's normal, but it's also normal to make the change. And all of these topics that we've covered this week, they culminate right here. What are you gonna do about this? Are you gonna take all these videos and see the change? Or maybe you have, Have you been implementing the awake windows, working on these transitions for your toddler, for your newborn, holding your baby to the awake times? Let me know in the comments how it's been going. We are doing the best we can, right? Every day at home with our little ones during this quarantine time. And I am here for you. So comment below if there are any specific needs that you're looking for. And you guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much for joining me on Naps Week. It's been so fun to bring this to you. Sweet dreams and see you next time.